Hello everyone, I uh, hope you're doing great. So when you open the software of SPSS, this is the first screen that you will see. And uh, as you can see on the left hand side, you can open your files, or if you have been working uh, with the files of SPSS, you will see a few of the recent files. Since I'm opening the software for the very first time, there is no recent file. So I will straight away close this window and I will jump to the window, uh, which is the main window for SPSS. And as you can see in the bottom, there are two views. One is called data view, the other one is called variable view. So these two are two of the three windows of SPSS. There is another window, which is called the output window. And we will see that whenever we run a statistical analysis, the output window is the window which appears and shows the analysis results. So uh, here I want you to look at these two tabs, the data view and the variable view. Right now, I'm in the data view. That's why uh, it's golden in color. So what if I click on variable view? You can see that um, the variable view is now switched on, which means that I can work in this variable view. And as you can see, the outlay of this software is very much similar to Microsoft Excel. So there are columns and rows, but uh, in the variable view, you can see that the columns have some names. They have title at the very top. So the very first column is the name column. Now, how do I initiate a variable in SPSS? How do I create a variable? So the first thing is that I would click on the very first cell and after clicking, I will start typing. For example, if I say I type age and I press enter, you can see automatically some of the remaining and most of the remaining columns, they get filled by themselves. So the first row is now active because there is a variable in it, but the rest of the rows have numbers, but those are dim, which means there are no variables entered for those rows. So my first variable, okay, has a name in the very first column, and then the complete row includes the properties or the characteristics which I'm going to assign to this variable. So the very first thing I want you to notice is that uh, when I enter a variable name, right away, it gives me a type of numeric, which means that this is a statistical package and it helps you to do the quantitative analysis. That's why it considers every numerical by default a numeric variable. Okay, so every variable is considered by default a numeric variable. But we can always change that. If a variable is not numeric variable, we can change that. There are a lot of types of variables that we can work with in SPSS. So I will go to the numeric you know, line, cell, and then you can see there are three dots in front of numeric. When I click on those dots, you will see this dialog box opening up and there are a lot of options here. Uh, so variable can be numeric, comma, dot, scientific notation, date, dollar, currency, uh, sign or custom currency. It can be a string variable, which means it can be a text variable or it can be a restricted numeric. So first of all, I will explain all of those one by one. But before that, I want you to see that in front of these types, you can see there are two options. One is width and the second one is decimal places. So decimal places is self-explanatory. For example, if you enter a particular value for this numeric variable, how many decimal places you want to have in front of that particular value? And uh, width means how many digits will be included for this uh, particular variable. Now, since I have entered age as a variable, you can assume that human age is usually below 100 years and only two digits would be included in the uh, normal age of human beings. So what if I just type here two? So the width of my variable, the numeric variable will be only two, there will be two digits in it. But see what happens when I click OK. It tells me that, OK, your uh, variable has a width of two digits, but 
the number the decimal places are too many for these two digits so you can reduce the decimal places from two to one um, or even you can put it into zero so either way it will work so when you click ok now you can see these two columns have the way their values changed you can see the width is now decreased to two and decimal places are decreased to one now, before I explain further that what are the different types of variables and how to enter them, one thing that I really want to make clear here is there are some conventions that you have to understand while you type the name of the variable. I have written age um, with the first alphabet as a capital alphabet. What if I write age like this with all small alphabets? So no difference, no error. But what if I write age space of candidate? So you will see an error. See the software is telling you that there is an illegal character. So the convention is that there cannot be any space in the name of the variable. So you cannot put any space. But what can I do? What I can write age underscore candidate. So I can use underscore instead of space and it will not give me an error. The second convention is that I can never start the name of any variable with a number, with a numeric. For example, if I say one age, it will return me an error, which is that there is some illegal character, which means you cannot start the variable name with a character. You can of course put a digit in the name of the variable but after some alphabets for example if i write down age 001 there is no issue with that that is completely fine one more convention is that i cannot start the variable's name with a currency sign i cannot write dollar age that would be incorrect and there will be an error but what i can do if i have to use a currency sign I can use it in the middle of the variable name without any spaces. For example, age and dollar of dollar candidate. There won't be any issue. But one fine way to actually extend this um, detail of a particular variable is to use the label cell. How we use that? First of all, I would encourage you to keep the variable names very short and you can write them in a way that you have coded them by yourself and you can put the details in the label cell. Let me show you how. For example, I would name this variable as age and then I will go to the label cell and over there I can write age of the candidate. So, uh, any time when I'm not sure what this variable is about, and for example, if I, have, if I have given it some mnemonic or a name which is not clear, I can always refer to the label cell and I can see that what is the uh, description of this particular variable. Now let me enter a few more variables. So for example, after age, I can write gender and then IQ underscore score and I can also write the performance right so I will not be labeling them right now I won't put anything in the label I want to go to the data view so let's see what happens when we add numeric uh, variables in the variable view what happens to the data view so as you can see the data view is active now and look at the top uh, column and row of this particular view. And you can see that in the data view, all the variables which I added in the variable view, they are present. Like age is there, gender is there, IQ score is there, performance is there, right? So uh, one more thing which I want you to notice is if I hover my mouse over age, you can see that after the name of the variable, you can see the label. So I can just hover over a variable and can understand that what the label of that variable is. 
So this information can also help me. Since I have not added any label for gender, IQ score and performance in the software in the variable view, so I cannot see any label for them. Whenever I hover over them, it only tells me what is the type of the variable and an unknown Meyer because I haven't defined any Meyers for these variables. But when I go to age, it shows me that what is the name and what is the label of that particular variable. So moving forward, I would like to now add on that particular type of variable. Uh, let me add a couple of more variables. For example, the city from where a particular student belongs and uh, the income level. Okay, so I'm just entering the variables into this variable view. And now I want to change the type of a few variables. As you know, city name is a string variable, which means I cannot assign a number. Although I can assign a number, but I won't assign a number. I just want to see the name of the city. I just want to enter the name of the city in the data. Uh, so I will choose the string variable. I will press OK. So now when I go to the data view, I have this city uh, variable, which has a different sign, which means that it is a string variable. And I can write down the categories here. So what if I write down Lahore and then Islamabad? OK, so uh, I cannot write this Islamabad completely. The reason for that is because the width which I have defined here is only eight. OK, so I can increase it. I can increase it to 99. So I can enter the major city names here. So now if I write Islamabad, I can easily write it down. Getting back to the variable view, you can see that what if I want to make income uh, another type of variable? For example, let me show you that what is comma and dot variable types. So these are two uh, called delimiters. Uh, by delimiters, I mean to say that they actually limit the format of a particular value. Let me show you how. For example, uh, in the income, I will choose the variable type as comma. Okay, so I will keep the decimal places to two values, but I will increase the width from eight to 15. Okay, so I can have large values of income also. So it could be a income for a particular candidate. Now I click on okay. And when I go to data view and enter a particular income level, for example, I want to enter here 2 million see what happens so when i press enter you can see there is a dot over there but there is also something which i wanted from this variable and that is that i wanted a comma delimitation here okay so let's see how can we bring that here right so i guess uh, you have to increase the width right so when i increase the width you can see that the variable value it has commas in it and these commas are uh, something we call delimiter and you have a decimal place before two digits which shows that there are two decimal places in the value of this variable i will go back to the variable view and now instead of comma i will choose dot as the variable type for income and when i press ok and go back to data view you can see that now instead of commas, you see dots. And uh, instead of uh, a dot before decimal places, you see a comma. So in some of the European countries, you will see this convention to write uh, digits, numbers, income. So uh, this can be used either way. If you're using the comma delimited, you can use that. If uh, your convention is that you have to use dots, that is also fine. Okay, so uh, what else I want to do with this? I want to go to this particular, uh, you know, dialog box and I want to see that how scientific notation works. For that purpose, I will create a new variable. So let's create a new variable and uh, let's call it interactions. Okay, so now the type I will choose from the list would be the scientific notation. I will click on OK. I will go to the data view 
Now in this interaction, you know, I will write down the values. For example, I, I will write two values and one would be really large value and the other one will be really small value, for example. So you can see that all these values are converted into scientific notation. So you can have a variable where the values are uh, extremely small or extremely large and you don't want to show the complete values you just want to show them in scientific notation so for that purpose you can use this particular type which is called the scientific notation so the next uh, one is date so let's enter some dates and let's see how date works in SPSS but here I also want to show you one more thing and that is that you can always add a one more variable by going to these number of rows and then clicking, uh, right clicking on these and clicking on insert variable. So click on insert variable and you will see this automatically named variable will appear. So I want to convert this into the birthday or birth date of a particular candidate. And I want to uh, put the type of variable as date. So when I click on date, you can see that different uh, date types appear here. And those are the types that we can use uh, while we enter the data. So I will choose the very first one and I will show you that how it works. So I will click on OK. Now I will go to the data view and you can see under the birthday column, uh, there is a small symbol also, which is showing me that this is a date variable. So for example, if I put this date as 15, 12, remember I have to use this hyphen, this minus sign. The reason for that is because the format which I have chosen has this hyphen in it. So if I don't use it, it will return me an error. So 15, 11, 1990, if I press this, so you can see that it will convert the 11 into the month and three letter month is shown in the date format. And this is how you can enter dates. Now, what if I go to the variable view, I click on this date variable I in the type I select date and then I choose one uh, other type of, you know, date format. When I click on OK and I go back to the date view, data view, you can see that the date format is changed automatically. So you can work with this later on, you can change the format of the date according to the requirement. Well, uh, now the next one, uh, let's see what is the next one. Next one is dollar, dollar sign. So I will select the income variable and in the type, I will select dollar, dollar currency. It will also uh, show me some options that how I want to actually portray this particular variable in the date, data view. So I can select any one of these to show that how the dollar values will be shown. So if I click on OK and uh, I go to the income, you can see the income variable is now expressed in dollar terms. I can also convert this into a custom currency. For example, the next type is custom currency. And you can see there are a few custom currencies available here. And my currency of Pakistan is not there. So how I can add that currency? We can always add a custom currency. So I will cancel out this dialog box. I will click on the edit menu and I will go to the options. And this dialog box will open up. Now in this dialog box, and there are a lot of tabs, but I will have to choose currency. After choosing currency, you can see the same options which were available in the software's dialog box of the variable type. They are available here. But uh, now there is another option of all values. And in all values, there is a particular option of prefix. So here I will add the currency sign of my currency. For example, I will add a prefix of PKR, which is Pakistani rupees. So. In the sample output, as you can see, that it is showing me what would be a positive value looking like. So PKR would be a suffix and then the value of the currency. And if I put in a negative value, the result would be minus PKR and the value which I will put over there. So I will click on OK. 
and now uh, this third window will open up which has opened up for the first time so let me tell you about the output windows at any time we give some instructions to the software for which it has to perform some kind of execute execution this output window will appear sometimes you will have some graphs and tables in it that are essential for our analysis and we will copy them and paste them into a particular file but for now since there is no uh, relevant information that we want to copy it is just a syntax which it has executed so i will just close it and um, it also asks you to save the file of output i don't need to save the file of output right now but sometimes what you want to do is you don't want to um, you know export the analysis to some other file you just want to share the output file with other people so you can always save this output window as a file so right now i will click on no and the output window will disappear now i will go to the three dots and custom currency and now you can see the pkr values over there i will click on ok now let's go to the data view and you can see that the pkr values over there uh, one more thing that you can see the uh, numeric value do not include any commas right now that that's why because i never clicked on the right of it uh, i never clicked on the period or the comma but i think uh, the comma was or the period was already selected let me show you that what i'm talking about so uh, if i go to the currency tab again you can see the period is selected here which means uh, comma or period will be included in the value so it's good to go okay uh, so again i will go to the variable view let's see some uh, further you know types so string is already uh, you know covered i'm not going to go for a restricted uh, restricted numeric it's a little bit complicated uh, so i won't be giving you any example i will right away now jump to see what we can do with these uh, different values now let's talk about the values column here you can see all the uh, variables have none written in front of them i can put label also uh, let's put some labels here gender of the candidate and the birthday is self-explanatory but i still want to put here the birthday IQ is the intelligence that we are looking into. Performance is academic performance. And uh, if I have misspelled performance, I can always go and click F2 to change the you know, spellings. F2 is the same key as it is used in Excel, right? And then city and city of birth, income level and interaction number of interactions at right so these are the labels that i have momentarily added just to show you that how we can add multiple labels and how can we write complete sentences to show what a particular variable means. Now coming to the values, how we use values in SPSS. They are the underlining numerical values that help us to calculate some statistical numbers, for example, frequency or numbers of central tendency, variation, and any further statistical analysis that we need to perform on those particular numbers. So let me add some numbers or values for gender. So I will come to the value and uh, I will click on the three dots at the end of the values, none button. And you can see this dialog box will open where there are two options. Number one is value, which value we want to assign to a particular label. For example, one is for male. Then I have to cl click on add and it will be added in this format you can see there are two decimal places in front of one the reason for that is because in this particular variable i have added two decimal places in the quantitative number then i will assign the value of two 
to female and I will add it here and I will assign the value of three to any other gender. Okay, so you can see that I have added three values. I can always go and remove one of them or change, right, something else. Okay, for example, if I want to put others in place of other, so I can change it. So now when I, I can also go and check the spellings from here. So since it has not found any spelling errors, I will click on OK. And now you can see that in the value uh, value cell, you can see there are values that have been shown. So I can easily understand for this particular variable, the values have been assigned. For any variable where you see none written, no particular variables, values have been assigned. Okay, so let me uh, uh, also perform some values for performance. I will click on the three dots again. Now I will add the number one value as excellent performance. Okay, number two for uh, standard performance. Number three for average performance. Number four for poor performance and maybe number five for uh, utterly and these are some you know made up uh, numbers and made up qualification levels and uh, we will talk about the different levels of measurements for a particular variable and then i will talk about this how liquid scale are used in surveys and those liquid scales can also be used to enter data into SPSS. So I will right away click on OK. And now when I go to the data view, uh, there is not much change there, but what I want to show you is that now in age for every candidate, I only have to write a number. For example, if I say one and two and three, you can see only numbers are appearing here but there is a particular particular toggle button for value labels here on this uh, icon bar. And this is one and A icon. If you click on it, it will show you the uh, values of the variables and uh, what those values have as names. Let me see why it is not showing. Maybe I haven't added any values for age and I have been adding numbers to the wrong variable. The reason for that is that I have to add in these numbers into the gender. So if I add numbers, the values which were assigned to gender variable, you can see now the particular labels are written over here. But if I want to show only the numbers, I will click on this particular button and the numbers will appear. If I want to shift again to the values or the labels, so I can click on the same button and this uh, toggle can help me to understand what is behind these numbers. So we also had performance values. So I will add them here so I can show you that it can work with all the variables. So you can see that when I click on this particular button, uh, the values are converted into the labels that we have assigned to those values. Okay. so. Let me go back to the variable view and let me talk about the next column, which is about missing values. Now, this is very interesting. The reason for that is when we perform a particular statistical analysis in SPSS, we have to understand how uh, missing values can impact on different type of analysis. Uh, this is an advanced topic. We will be performing some analysis and we will be seeing that how missing values can impact on an analysis, especially when we are doing modeling or forecasting. So it can impact a lot on the model that we are building in SPSS. And for that, if we want to confine the impact of missing values on a particular model or analysis, what we can do is we can go to this column missing for a particular variable and we can click on three dots and this dialog box will appear where it will show us that either there are any missing values that we want to use for analysis or not. If we say no missing values, which means that 
uh, all the missing values that are in the data can be used for the analysis. But then you have the second option. Since you know I'm in the age variable, and if I want to show this, uh, if I want to give the instructions to the software that these ages should not be included in the analysis, for example, if I say that all people who have an age of 15, uh, 25, and 35, they should not be included in the data analysis. So the software will exclude these values when the software will perform the analysis. But rather than giving a discrete missing values, I can also use a range that the software should not use the analysis of people who have an age of uh, like 10 years to 20 years. So I want to perform uh, this analysis on everybody who is above the age of 20. So I can use that, I can click on okay. So whenever I will perform some analysis, I have values in age variable, the software will exclude the values from 10 to 20. Right, so there is another, uh, you know, issue with the missing values. For example, let me show you like like how how we can use missing values for analysis and how we can detect some missing values. For example, if I put the information here for like some of the variables, some of the cases, and uh, by cases I mean to say that. Uh, these rows so you can see these three rows they are active now which means i have three cases or i can say in simple words that there are three candidates for which i have recorded data and the data entered for the first candidate is complete whereas the data entered for the other candidates is incomplete so there are some missing values now this file can extend to thousands of respondents. So there can be huge data sets that are included in the software. So what then, um, what about the missing values? How can I tackle them? So let me show you that if we go to this menu of uh, uh, data, I think it's in the transform. Let's find out the missing value, missing value button. I think I will have to find out that where are the missing values? Where did it go? Oh yeah, so it's here in the analyze menu. So you can see that there is a particular option for missing value analysis. So when I click on this, option you can see this dialog box will open up now what we have to do is that we have to select the variables for which we want the missing values to be known so for example here you can see the list of the variables age of the candidate the gender of the candidate and so on now i will move these variables to the quantitative variables window and how i can do that i will select all of them control a and if i try to move all of them by clicking on this arrow you will see that the software will tell me that there are some string variables and for string variables you don't have to worry about the missing values so you can exclude that so i will click on okay so i have this city variable which if you remember we actually added it as a string variable so now i will select all the other variables and I will click on this arrow. So the variables will move into the quantitative variables window. Now, if I click on OK, and then this output window will appear. And as you can see, among other statistics, this window is also telling me that there is one missing value in age, there are two missing values in birthday, and so on. So by this, you can understand how many missing values you have in your data in a particular variable, how many missing values are there. Now, first thing is that you understand that how many missing values are there. So once you have identified that a particular variable has missing values, now what you can do is you can go to uh, the transform, excuse me, transform uh, drop-down menu, and you can click on 
record into same variable record into same variable so you will select the option record into the same variable now again similar pattern apart from the string variables select all the variables move them into the variable window and then click on add and new values right so now you have to select system missing that uh, how many values are missing in the system and then provide a new value for them for example if i say that i want to write here negative 999 for all these values then i will click on the add button and you can see that this particular value will be added for all the missing values now i can click continue and when i click on ok you can see this uh, particular output window will appear and a command will be executed and if i close this output window click on no you can see the missing value for quantitative variables now have minus 999 now why this is important because now i can go to the variable view and in the missing value i can simply add a particular missing value a discrete missing value minus 999 so whenever the software will perform any analysis it will exclude these missing values by just copying it with minus 999 so this will help me to actually uh, come up with a solution for my missing values so there are other techniques that we can also use for missing values we can put average values of the data into those values we will talk about that when we go to the particular modeling analysis now let's talk about the alignment of data it's very simple that how the numbers or string text will be aligned in the data view for example if you say center and you choose left for some variable you choose right what's the difference go to the data view and see that if you say center the numbers are in the center if you say left it is on the left and if you say right it is on the right very simple the next is the measurement so in SPSS, you have only three types of measurements. One is nominal and the other one is ordinal. The third one is scale. So the first two nominal and ordinal, they are categories. They are categorical data. By nominal, we mean the, categor the categorical data which don't have any order in it. So it is just number of categories. The categories can have some frequency in them. You can calculate frequency with them. Uh, not much be, can be done for this kind of data but when we talk about ordinal data ordinal data is a data which has categories in it but it also has an order between the categories so one category has a preference over the other category so you can sort the category categories in ascending or descending order then the scale variable is a pure quantitative variable which is a variable which can be expressed in the form of digits so if I talk about these three variables, you can see that the gender is a nominal variable because there are three categories that we have defined, male, female, and others. So we can cal calculate the frequency or the proportion for these three categories. But uh, apart from that, beyond that, we are unable to do much about it. Then we have ordinal type of data. And for example, if we consider the performance as an ordinal variable so we would say that these values they have some sort of preference or some sort of order in them for example you can see that from excellent we are moving towards the utterly poor performance and there is a pattern to it and if we look at the age any number between 0 and 100 can be used for age which is a quantitative variable again the discrete as well as continuous values can be included so uh, this is about the Meyer column now in the last column uh, we can see that we have selected or it has been automatically selected as input so since this is a statistical package for social science the theoretical or conceptual models that are analyzed through quantitative data analysis usually will have some kind of independent variable or the target vari variable which can also be called the dependent variable or there can be a variable 
which has both of the properties. Sometimes it's, it's an independent variable, sometimes it's an dependent variable, or a variable which, is, which has nothing to do with the independence or the dependence of a particular property or characteristics, or uh, we can perform some partition or split on those variables. It can be splitted according to the gender, or it can be splitted according to some other criteria. So later on, we will try to comprehend this particular detail also. But for now, what I want you to do is just open up your SPSS software and put in some variables, add some values, and try to play with the scheme of the variables that how numeric or date or string or custom or delimited variables can be entered into the software, how their values, their columns, their width, their alignment, or their measurement can be changed. So this would be all for today. Uh, hopefully next time we will do further analysis and I will start with descriptive statistics in the next uh, lecture and we will perform some uh, descriptive statistics analysis. Thank you very much.